Here we are. So, uh, like I'm center somehow. No, there we go. What is that? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I know why. Never mind. There we are. Okay. Are you ready to start there, Lindsay? Say yes. You betcha. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Penny. Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays. Uh, I'm trying to find some ways to use our isolation time in a productive manner and pretend like things are normal for just an hour a day. Um, I'm going to be chatting about the Surefoot Equine Stability Program tonight, which I'm super excited about. Uh, so let's get started. Welcome, everybody. So a little bit about me, <clears throat> um, just because not all of you know who I am. Um, I am, first and foremost, I was an equine body worker back in 2002. Um, then I decided, you know, I think I just don't know anything and I need to know more. So uh, I ended up going to Nate to do the Animal Health Technology Program. Uh, finished that in 2007. And then thought, hmm, nope, still don't know enough. So um, I actually ended up in small animal practice and did my uh, certification in canine re rehabilitation uh, through the University of Tennessee. Uh, did, and I've pretty much been doing that ever since. So for the last 10 years, um, I've been doing strictly rehab um, on a combination of dogs and horses. So in February of this year, I was lucky enough to join the team at Delaney and um, to help start up our rehab program and get things going there. Um, I am an owner, a proud owner of a 14 year old Andalusian mare who has been my best teacher. Um, she, we've gone through saddle fit issues, we've gone through injuries, we've gone through obesity, uh, you name it, we've gone through it. So she's taught me a lot and uh, so I refer to her as, as my teacher. Um, and I've ridden in various disciplines over the years um, and you know, just like to, I feel like I have a good rounded knowledge of, of, of a lot of different sports out there. So hopefully um, we can help all of your athletes once we can get back at it. Um, and I'm just a general advocate for animals and, and uh, any four-legged creatures um, and passionate about lifelong learning. So here we are. So um, I had invited Wendy to uh, join us today, but I don't think she's available. She's two hours ahead of us as well, so it's a little bit late for her. So I will just introduce, um, Wendy Mur Murdoch is the creator of the Surefoot Equine Stability Program. Um, she's primarily a riding instructor and clinician. Um, it's also a certified Feldenkrais Method practitioner and an author. She's written several, uh, several books and done a lot of DVDs and she's got lots of videos on YouTube and that sort of thing. So. Um, I've been following her for about a year and was really interested in these pads that that we could use for horses. You know, with the dogs, I, I've always used a lot of stability, um, core stability type training with them. And I thought, why don't we have something like this for horses? And then she popped up and I said, hallelujah, here we go. So this is an introduction, uh, introduction into this. I had to share this photo because uh, as a 14 year old, it was one of my favorite movies of all time. I think I saw it five times in the theater, <laughs> dating myself, but um, what makes a horse sure-footed? I guess that's what our question is right now. Um, the man from Snowy River. Uh, the foot is a neurosensory organ. So it's not just, you know, a, a, a toenail as, as we sometimes think of the horse's hooves. Um, yes, there's a toenail that surrounds the outside of the foot, but Inside that hoof capsule, there is a lot going on. Um, there are pressure sensors in the hoof, and, and you can see on these pads, they've actually taken an impression, so you can see how the horse is weight bearing and all the different structures within the foot. So this is a diagram uh, of the internal structures of the foot. So you can see we have uh, our coffin bone, our short pasture, and a long pasture, and you can imagine the leg goes all the way up. Um, we have our deep digital flexor tendon, which is attaching onto these two areas. We have our navicular bone, which often causes us issues. Um, we have the outer horn that we talk about, the shiny surface. And then we have all of this. And this 
area is our digital cushion and our frog. And that's, you know, part of the great shock absorbing sh system of the foot. Um, even in, in tech school, I was just absolutely fascinated the day we learned about the equine foot because it is one of nature's most amazing shock absorbers. And if we have a functional foot, it can do so much to dampen forces on the rest of the joints going up. So as you can see in this um, diagram, there's all these different blood vessels and things in the digital cushion. So it's very vascular. And in fact, there's a lot of connective, fascial connective tissue all through here. And sometimes I can get kind of contracted and stuck. And it's almost like having plantar fasciitis in, in humans. So it can be quite a, quite a painful condition. So we want to make sure that the foot is optimally um, loading and that we're getting proper stimulation and good foot function. So you'll also notice, of course, that a lot of this is epidermis dermis, so essentially skin. So there is um, layers of skin in here as well. So that will make sense on my next slide. So there's four, I guess, four main um, account receptors in, in, in any part of the skin, but of course the bottom of the foot is no different. So we have this, the skin surface, and then we have um, the nerve running through, and then we have these various account receptors. And each of them responds to different things. So some of them um, respond to pressure, some uh, low frequency vibrations, some high frequency vibrations, uh, some detect stretch. So when the, the foot expands and, and the structures are stretched, that's going to stimulate those um, mechanoreceptors. So these are a lot of, um, there's a lot going on in there, of course. Um, and one of the things I remembered when I did, I did a medical massage for animals course back in 2011 down in Colorado. And uh, I found it fascinating because when we talked about compression on the skin, uh, we were stimulating these Pacinian corpuscles and that creates a relaxation effect in the body. And so that is why things like the Thunder shirt works on a dog. It's a, that's a, a t-shirt that provides compression on the body for calming influence. So um, if we keep that in mind, we understand a little bit how these pads may come into play for the horses. So again, this is just another diagram of the foot, just shows you where some of these mechanoreceptors are. Many of them are in this heel bulb area, the digital cushion, and in through the frog. So really important that we get some ground contact with those structures. Again, you know, just looking at a cross section, this is from behind the foot. Um, so we have our frog area here, we've got our navicular bone, pastern bone, we've got our lateral cartilage. Um, lots of vasculature, or that nice fibrous, um, hopefully dense, spongy uh, fascial network that's helping with that concussion. And so um, we don't, the, the horse doesn't even have to be conscious of, of this compression of the foot for it to work, um, which is the beauty of it. We call that conscious perception or proprioception. So they're aware whether they think about it or not, just as we are. Um, so this again shows a little bit, I guess, about the sequence potentially. There's still a lot of research going into all of this. So hopefully landing on the heel and stimulating all these internal structures. So um, these mechanoreceptors are activated when a horse lands either normally or with a, with a flat or a heel first impact. So you can see in this diagram, he's landing with his heel first, which is what we'd really like to see. And that's uh, important. Um, strong proprioception, which is our body's awareness of where we are in space um, and the ability to respond to those signals um, will help prevent injury and make a horse sure-footed, which is what we're hoping for because everybody wants to feel safe when they're out there. So we have a lot of questions. Um, so does surefoot dampen or eliminate that high, those high energy vibrations um, from the ground? Is this, is this the cause of visible relaxation we see in the horse? Um, can it be a form of therapy that for lameness that we can't necessarily block out? So if we do nerve blocks and we don't see an obvious lameness, but we still have some postural imbalances or muscle asymmetry, or you know, we're just loading things it's harder to pick up one foot than another. Um, they're not necessarily lame, but they're not functioning uh, optimally. So the results we see are quite rapid. Um, and I've had the pads for 
well, I've had one pad for uh, probably a good month and I've been playing with it on various horses and I've got my full set now, which is super exciting. And, um, and I'm, so I'm able to play with some different densities and things, but I will tell you that every horse I've put it under has had this effect. It's just this sort of instant, they start processing and relaxing and, and it is, it is within, within a very short amount of time. We'll see breathing changes. So they get that nice rib expansion. You'll see those nostrils flaring a bit. Um, they might start shifting their weight and trying to, you know, just feel you know, throughout their body what's going on. Um, we'll see a softening of the facial expression, um, licking and chewing, yawning, all of those classic sort of releases that we like to see. And like I say, the visible in within seconds to minutes, um, we'll see them lower their head and get into almost that grazing mode. So stimulation of the parasympathetic nervous system, um, which is that rest and digest side of the nervous system, um, just shutting off that fight or flight response. Uh, we find them exploring movement and functionally integrating um, what's going on in their bodies. Um, a lot of them will sway and rock on the pads, which is kind of neat to see. And we just see this profound relaxation and that's pretty common with every horse that you put them under. Um, and is that an endorphin release? I mean, you know, when we stimulate those mechanoreceptors, that is, you know, hitting the nervous system, it's going right to the brain and it's, we're getting, you know, maybe dopamine release or endorphin release of some sort. So this is a horse um, and it was a, uh, Kim Asher is in, in um, New York State. Uh, I asked her permission to use this because I thought it was so amazing. And uh, she said, of course, and she's a dressage trainer and a rider, obviously. She uses the pads to warm up her horses um, before a ride or before a clinic. And, we're going to have her sit on this. There we go. <laughs> so you can see this horse is very comfortable on them. And they are, she's actually used a bit of a stacking, um, she's stacking different paths to just try different things. And obviously this horse has been on them a lot because it's, he's really enjoying it and just kind of swaying and, and having a good time there. So really relaxed. And, you know, you look at those ears and um, standing really nice and squarely, which is amazing. So these are all good. Oops, ah, I've already seen you. Next. <laughs> um, so Wendy is uh, primarily, like I say, more primarily a, a riding instructor. So a lot of the sessions she does is are with, with people under saddle. So she'll start with them uh, on the ground to make sure they're comfortable with the pads first, and then she will introduce them during a riding session. And so these are a couple of examples of horses that she's worked with. And um, she's using the pads to help them, I guess, almost reset movement patterns that are incorrect and, and trying to get back to that homeostasis or that, that sort of normal for, for that animal. So this horse uh, had had Lyme disease, um, had been treated and recovered, but was left with a severe twist in the head, which you can see on this slide here. Um, so this is on day one. They did about a 40 minute session with the pad and what that looks like is she will have them stand on a pad, just kind of process, walk away, go walk for a few minutes, try it, do whatever, do, do some movements, come back, get on the pads again, and just, you know, play with, with different firmnesses and, and uh, different orientations to see what the horse likes. And it's kind of about a choice for them. It's about what is their preference? What does their body need today? And they will, will figure it out based on that. So the very next day, this was the ride that she got. And you can see that that head tilt is gone. And apparently it stayed gone. So it, it reset her, um, reset that, and she did not go back to, to, um, to having the head twist. So that was pretty impressive for her. Uh, again, this upper horse, you can see, now this is within the same session because she's wearing the same outfit. Um, but initially, you know, a bit of tension, she's a little bit inverted through here, kind of short striding a bit. Um, after, you know, again, probably 40 minutes or, you know, throughout part of the session, um, we're seeing a much more relaxation through the neck, um, much rounder top line, larger stride. So just more relaxation worth through in the riding. 
uh, this bottom one, you'll see something similar. Again, just a lot of tension here. Um, this is a day apart, it looks like. And here we've got a little bit more uphill, um, less on the forehand and um, just moving better and more relaxed. Uh, okay, uh, so results that we see, you know, we see positive changer, changes in behavior. So if it's a really nervous horse, often we can use it as a tool to just shut off that fight or flight, get them, you know, relaxing and um, feeling more receptive to what we're doing. Uh, improved posture and movement, which is, is big from a rehab perspective. Um, greater confidence. So we can use it in horses that are a little bit nervous and again, create a safe place for them. Uh, deep relation, re relationship with the owner so you can work with your horse with the pads and <clears throat> use it as a real bonding experience and just really use it as a time to observe and understand where your horse might be holding tension or have dysfunction. Uh, again, relaxation is a huge thing in, in any environment. I had a horse in the clinic yesterday and there was a lot going on. They were inducing a horse in the other room. It was loud and the horse was asleep. So it was really kind of an interesting, um, and the owner wasn't there, of course, because we're, we're trying to keep less, keep people out of the clinic, of course. Um, and then we'll see this sort of these lasting um, results from it, which is also benefit. Um, the, Wendy also talked about a horse who um, wasn't very good at trailering, wouldn't get on the trailer, pod in the trailer, that sort of thing. They did some sessions and um, the horse was a different horse on the way home. So, you know, just interesting uh, anecdotes there. So Surefoot appears to provide a simple and easy uh, effective way to influence sensors in the horse's hooves, which will then facilitate the release of these nice brain chemicals that create relaxation and calm. And given the choice, you know, the horses are very sensitive and they, they generally know what they need and will self-correct um, to reestablish healthy function whenever possible. So why would we use them? Let's go through a few things. So I look at it from two different perspectives. Um, Traditional rehab, which is of course my, my day job, so that's how I think. Uh, so used as a modality to strengthen postural muscles, to facilitate, um, re-educate um, the nervous system. If we've had an injury that's, that's you know, even a, an injury to a joint, it's going to affect the mechanoreceptors in that joint, which then may make them trip or may, may uh, influence how they experience that limb in space. And so we can use them to re-educate that connection um, improve core stability is another big one. If you've got a horse that's on these pads and is rocking and swaying, they're using muscles that they probably forgot they had, kind of like when we do yoga or Pilates. So um, we do need to do shorter sessions if they are, you know, swaying a lot. Um, so we'll talk about which pads you pick for, for which, which thing. Uh, the other, I guess, is an obvious one is, is I'm a firm believer in giving you as owners tools to help your horses on a day-to-day -day basis. So I can come and do a massage or laser therapy or kinesio taping or whatever on a daily basis, but or not on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, let's say, but it's not gonna be as impactful as you working with your horse every day. Uh, so if you have tools that will help you to do that, that is ideal. And I, so I look at this as, as a tool to help um, create a, a a space of, of safety and comfort and relaxation with, with them. So, remember, I mean, you know, let's kind of just have to look at um, any condition we can, we can have an effect. So any condition involving um, a forelimb lameness, uh, so laminitic of horses, of course, for comfort and circulation of those feet, um, we can put them on pads just to get them um, feeling, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, you know, get them off the hard ground, get them on something that's soft and, and feels nice under the feet. Uh, soft tissue injuries, so we can load them in a more controlled manner, depending on which firmness we pick. Osteoarthritis, um, we, you know, can use them as a way to sort of flush, you know, get those, um, stimulate that, that blood supply and that circulation so that we can flush out some of the, the inflammatory cells and get new 
regenerative um, blood flow into those areas. We can use it postoperatively, so after uh, joint scoping or thoroscopy. Um, nervous horses, so this is another one, and I'll, I'll show an, an example near the end um, where we used it with a farrier to create calm for a procedure. So this horse was nervous and had tension in its leg and he wouldn't pick it up and, and we used the pads to, to help with that. Uh, the other thing we can use, and, and I use this a lot in, in the dog world, in that I didn't have a huge facility. So often I was just observing, Not I couldn't always observe gait, but I could observe their posture on various um, surfaces. So I'd put them on something unstable and then I could really see, okay, they're really leaning this way or they're sh weight shifting that way. And so we can do the same thing with horses. We put them on there and we see, okay, are they really loading medially? Are they, you know, really loading their toe and avoiding the heel contact? Um, so it gives us feedback. And then of course the hind limb is no uh, stranger to dysfunction either. We have, you know, Many horses have weakness in their quads and the hind end and it affects their, um, their stifles and their sacroiliac joints. Um, we can strengthen those postural muscles so that they have better support through those joints so that the joints can function normally. Just most of those joints should just be a hinge joint and often we get this, this movement that we shouldn't have. And so if we can stabilize those postural muscles, we'll have a much stronger and a better functioning joint in general. Uh, as I talked about earlier, if we have tendon or ligament injuries, we do need to load those structures in order for them to heal. We need to challenge them a little bit, but we want to do it in a controlled way. Uh, so again, so there's more, it's endless. Uh, so we have horses that need to, I mean, one horse doesn't need to improve their core strength and stability. I mean, the core is what uh, supports the back and um, supports us as riders. So, you know, we all want that nice round um, collected horse that, that moves beautifully. And, and that's, you know, core strength is a big part of that. Um, body awareness, motor control, um, you know, horses with kith kissing spines really need a lot of stability through the, the muscles that support those, those spinal joints. Um, we can use it to facilitate soft tissue, mo tissue mobilization. So um, if I think about a dog who's got a scapula that's really stuck, a shoulder blade, I can, I can lay him on his side and I can mobilize that scapula. A little bit hard to do in a horse. So with the horses, we can then maybe stack the pads in a way where we're actually getting some, some movement through that thoracic sling and, and just get things gliding um, through that withers area. Uh, and get some nice releases through there. And I think I've got a picture coming up that will demonstrate that. Um, lots of neuro cases out there. We can use it again to just help re-educate the body as to where, where the limbs should be. So this is basically just a quick guide to all the pads that are available. So there's quite a number of different ones to select. Um, and I'm just going to go through sort of the properties of all of the pads. So each pad has two workable surfaces. We have a direct side and then the, uh, with the, has a coating and the other side is just the foam. Um, each pad is 10 by 12 by 2 inches thick uh, with the exception of the physio and farrier or used to be called the farrier, farrier pad but now we call it a physio pad. Uh, it's only an inch and a half thick and I'll show you those as well. Um, one side is covered in this Duraflex coating, so that's a highly durable coating that's used on hospital flooring, vet clinics, shelters. Um, so very durable, very easy to clean, um, has some antibacterial properties, uh, which is great if you're using on multiple horses. There is a three-year warranty against any of the uh, any delamination of the Duraflex coating and or the pad layers. So if regular little nicks and scuffs are, are in going to be normal wear and tear, but if the pad rips or the, the coating comes off, then they'll be replaced within three years. And many people are using them, I guess the pads came out about eight years ago, and there's many people using the first ones that they got and they've held up beautifully. Um, easily cleaned with a brush, soap and warm water, so that's easy. Uh, they were designed and tested by Wendy Murdoch herself. Um, they carry the official Surefoot logo and are assembled in the United States, so um, I think we're all kind of more aware of shopping locally and supporting things that are made in our own 
continent. <laughs> so um, that's a nice one. It uh, can be used with any uh, horses of any size, weight, or breed. So it could be anything from a mini to a draft horse. Um, I see. Um, available in different densities. So that provides various levels of firmness um, depending on the horse's preference and, and what we're kind of trying to accomplish. Um, all the pads come in a pair of two, except for the physio pads, and they come with an instructable, instructional, instructional DVD, um, which basically it has Wendy just talking about safety and how to start using the pads. Um, she also has videos on her website that uh, if you don't have a DVD player like me, <laughs> you can go on there and, and find them. Um, so as I said before, you can use them at, for groundwork to start with, and then when the horse is comfortable, you can use it with the rider mounted as well. So I'm just gonna go through each pad just to kind of give you a brief overview of what they are and why you would use them. Uh, so we have the physio pad, which is um, half, there's a half physio pad and a, and a full, this is a half. So the, uh, the full one is twice this size, as you can see. And this has a hard, um, hard top, which is, so, so it's got an inch of hard foam and a half inch of medium foam. So this is quite springy and the front is hard and I'll talk about hard next so you can see what, what that means. Um, it'll take a nice hoof impression, which is nice. Uh, you can get both feet on the bigger one, which is also helpful in some cases. Uh, this, we just talked about that. Uh, it, like I say, you can you can see a hoof impression in the hard foam, which is what the top of this one is, and that impression will last for a couple of minutes. So it's kind of nice to, to kind of compare how they're weight pairing side to side. So the hard pads are a thicker pad; they're the two inch, a um, little bit smaller than than the physio pad, and they're a really great starter pad. Um, so it's going to give slowly under the horse's foot. It gives to heat and pressure. So if it's cold, it's going to take a little longer to conform, but it's very stable. So if the horse is nervous at all, this is a great pad to start on. Uh, it gives them a nice base of support without too much movement, but they still get um, that stimulation at the bottom of the foot that we're looking for. Um, like I say, the impression lasts for several minutes, but it will go away. And we can use it as a base for stacking pads, which is kind of nice. Um, I actually used uh, an impression when my hoof trimmer was doing my horse the other day. And uh, for some reason, she had kind of a squared off toe. It didn't look squared off, but the way she was weight bearing, it did. So that gave her some information to go and say, oh, maybe we'll take a little more toe. And lo and behold, we got a nice round imprint in the end. And, and it just kind of gave us that little bit of fine tuning that we needed, which was great. The hard pads also come in what they refer to as a slant. So this is kind of a wedge shaped pad. This one is designed to just be colored size up just because of the angles. It's more stable that way. It's great for offloading the heels. So if you have a horse that's um, tight through those flexor tendons or has had an injury through the flexor tendons or has caudal heel pain and we wanna offload those heels, um, it's a really comfortable, nice way to do that. The other way we can use it is for mediolateral uh, imbalance. So if we want to have them a little higher on the inside, just you know, if they're pronating a little bit, we can then um, help them be in that more normal posture as well. Um, and yeah, it just helps to sort of soften. Um, I had a horse on them yesterday. She's got really tight hamstrings. It was a great way to release release those in the hind end. Just so I, I left them under um, her hind feet with the heel high while I worked on some other things and she really, really enjoyed that. So um, the firm pads are also a great entry level pad, but they have a little more give to them. So if it's a nervous horse, uh, you might want to start with the hard pad or the physio pad, which has that really um, slow giving uh, surface. But the firm pad um, has just a little bit more give and I have one here somewhere I can show you. So um, I don't know if you can see me trying to squish it, but it's it's quite firm still, but it does have some give to it. So it also is going to give um, medial laterally a little bit. Uh, and it's great because you can really see sort of where they're placing the weight on their feet, which is interesting. A um, little bit of spring back when they go to get off of it, 
And again, we have the both working surfaces. So the direct surface has the coating, the diffuse side does not. So it actually has a little bit more grip, if that's a concern at all. Um, and that's pretty much the firm pad. So the firm pad also comes in a slant. Um, I have one of those there somewhere. Yes, like this. So it's just it's a wedge, right? So you can even have them just stand on the on the corner of it if, if they're nervous at all and you just want to have them step on something but not something too high. You can even just sometimes they'll just put their foot on part of it and it's really interesting just to watch them respond even with that little bit of input. Uh, here they've they've got them stacked again, so they're just looking for something more dramatic. And you don't have to have the same pads under both feet. And you can see here, she's got a slant under one and a physio pad under the other. And so it's just really about playing with them a little bit and seeing what the horse likes. It's an offering. It's, it's, it's hard for those of us who want to have a plan and we want to say, this is what we're going to do today and this is how we're going to do it. Horses, you know, they just don't always read the textbooks and they are going to do what they want to do. And so this is an opportunity, an opportunity for us to say, hey, today's job all about you. You decide what you want. Do you want this under your foot? Great. If you don't, let's try another foot. You know, if they're not picking up a foot, you know, let's not get after them. Let's just say, ooh, you know, why do they want to pick up that foot? Is it, you know, is it that difficult for them to stand on the other foot? Um, it's information. So, so just observe and, and use it as information. Uh, moving forward. The medium pads uh, have the most spring to them. One of those here. It's quite a dense bone, but it's nice and squishy. Um, in fact, uh, uh, the two-legged human population really likes standing on these. They feel really comfortable. Um, and yes, you can use them yourself if you want to. Um, they have a lot more spring back, so they're a little bit, you know, I'd want to start on one of the other pads first and then introduce these. You know, if they don't care and they, they're really good about things, then um, you can go straight to these. But I would, I would start with something a little, a little less instability. Um, and, you know, these are, this is probably for a little bit more fit horse as well, uh, because there will be more movement and they're going to have to stabilize themselves. And that's going to work those, those muscles that maybe they don't use all the time. We don't want to make them sore, so. The soft pads are the softest pad, go, go figure. Uh, so quite squishy, you can see it's really nice and soft. So, um, you know, you get those laminated horses that are really sore. These are like standing on a cloud. They're just, give, you, give me some relief right now. It's like the ultimate soft stall. So um, there's very little resistance. So in fact, they almost can feel the ground through them, which I think um, for some is, is comforting. Um, really little to no rebound. Um, and the foam's going to really fill in those, those internal structures. So if we really want to stimulate those internal structures, this is a great one to do that. Uh, again, to work with the surfaces. And then if you want to get really advanced, <laughs> we would work to the pod. So the pod is like a little dome and it's flat on one side and it's nubby on the other. So we're getting some nice like reflexology for the feet. So again, this one moves all over and it's again more advanced. You want to start them on the pads and then work towards this. Um, but the nice thing about it is that you can really assess imbalances in weight bearing. So I'll show you a video in a moment that will really highlight that. Um, and I really emphasize not using these until the horse is comfortable. But many horses you can get, you can put all on all four feet with these um, as they get used to them and they start to really like them and they start you know moving and, and shifting and and just really figuring out how to release some of those tensions deep within their body that they they couldn't figure out how to do before so so this is a video that Wendy shared with me uh, it's just a two minute video and so horse was really um, comfortable before they started she stood on them for a few minutes, took a little walk, came back, stood on them again. So you can see really unevenly um, waiting here. And so they're kind of watching the change of angle. You can watch her shift her weight a little bit. If you watch those fet walks, you can see her sweat swaying back and forth. Um, these feet are not ideal from my perspective, but we're not going to talk about that today. 
as they rock and shift. It's really small movements, but really impactful. And again, this is just another little, little, little angle. So they've gone and walked around and come back and put them back on. And you can see it's evening out. It's getting better each time she goes on them. And um, a lot of people ask if you, you know, if you have to have um, an unshod foot, um, no, they will work with, with an unshod foot, with shoes or with boots. Um, Obviously, I think you're going to get the most impact with an unshod foot, but um, it works with all of those options. So towards the end, you can see that we are still really waiting on this right one, but um, it's becoming more normal and she's standing much more squarely. And I think at the end, there's, there's kind of a before and after, which gives you a good overview of both. So that's, that's the before, that's the beginning, and um, quite a profound change in 30 minutes, which I thought was pretty, pretty interesting. So moving on, again, different configurations. This one has medium on the front and I think has some firm slants on the back. And this is a very typical getting these nice yawning releases and things. Um, this is that dressage horse again. You can see she's she's playing with lots of different pads, lots of different configurations. Um, but if you can imagine, you know, if they can get kind of swaying through this back end there and, and really helping losing or loosening some of those pelvic stabilizing muscles, the SI joints, you know, it's just a really nice way for them to get nice and relaxed. This is the one I was talking about earlier. So we can use um, in combination. So this, this is three pads stacked. And if you look, you can see the sternum is kind of is straight here, but this is really high. So we're getting really nice releases through that shoulder blade. Um, so it's actually able to glide because of course horses don't have uh, a collarbone like we do that the shoulder blade is, is basically connected with soft tissue. And so we should be able to get some nice gliding and movement through there. And this is a way that we can do that and the horses really appreciate that. So this is Bruce. Uh, he, Jesse, was kind enough to let me use this photo. Um, so Bruce has been one that he has been shooing for some time and he would never allow him to pick up the, the well, he would let, allow him to pick up the hind leg, but he would really jack it up, like almost string halty. Um, I don't even know if that's a word, but uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> so he'd really jack it up. It was almost like he was getting a zing down the leg or something. And so we said, well, here, try picking it up when we have the pad under his foot. And he could not believe it. He said the, the foot was like butter in his hand. It was just, he's never been able to just kind of let it relax in that low um, position here. So he was, he was sold on that first, that first step. Um, this is Housie. She used my little model on Facebook yesterday. So she did so well uh, in the clinic. She's recovering from a number of different things. Um, she had some laminitis last year and she's coming for some corrective shoeing and techniques and things. So we did some body work with her yesterday. Um, I had a nice video on her Facebook page of her kind of rocking and swaying on the pads. And she really liked this heel high um, scenario. Um, like I said, she has really tight hamstrings and so that's going to release all the way up the leg and into the lower back. She's tightening her lower back as well. So I think it's a really nice way to do that. And, you know, we just played with different scenarios. I had her on all four at one point, but of course I <laughs> couldn't get the picture at the time. Um, and this is Wyatt. Um, so my, my friend Michelle has Wyatt. Uh, at her farm and um, he's 23, he's a retired rainer. He's got some arthritis in his knees and he was like butter. He fell asleep, he was licking and chewing. Um, Sheila's doing his feet there and he's just zoning out and relaxed. Um, and in fact, every time I walk away and come back to him, he'd nicker at me, it was really cute. So, um, and another interesting thing is when we put it under his front foot, he put it under the right front foot, he, kept stretching his right hind. So, you know, again, we have to think of these horses as a whole. I mean, sometimes if we have a fascial restriction somewhere, you know, in our, in our front foot or our front leg, it can carry all the way into our, you know, into our back end. So it, it allowed him to do some nice releases in that area as well. 
this is this is something that for clinic use, um, basically it's your 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 X-ray block, but they've got a sure foot um, surface on it, so it just has a little bit better traction, a little bit of give for more comfort, and um, so you can slide the the X-ray uh, right into the into the block. So these are some additional resources. Um, the Wendy's working on a Surefoot Equine specific uh, website. Not quite uh, ready yet, but you can go go see a lot of information on the MurdochMethod.com. She's got all kinds of videos and um, different resources resources there. Um, like I say, there's a lot of YouTube. Um, her Facebook page has been amazing. The fans of Surefoot um, Facebook page is great because. There's a lot of owners and trainers and just people who have pads that will post testimonials or pictures or questions about, you know, I did this with my horse and this happened and what do you think of that? And so it's a great way to um, kind of just see how everybody's using them. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, Wendy's got a lot of webinars going on. She's been doing daily webinars lately with various clinicians and um, experts in the field. So it's been really interesting. On Friday, you definitely want to tune in because she's doing one with a, a veterinarian from um, Florida, I believe, but she's um, highly educated. So that'll be really good. Uh, again, this is just the full range. If anyone has questions, um, is interested in pricing, I'm going to be placing an order um, probably sometime in the next week. Uh, so if anyone's interested in ordering some, just email me at the Rehab at Delaney Vet Services web, or email address and I will send you a price list and uh, give you recommendations uh, as, you know, as far as I can tell at this point. Um, and when things loosen up a bit, I'll be happy to, you know, come out and do some sessions with people if they're interested, um, kind of play with the pads and see what works best for them. So. That is all I have for you guys for today. So Lindsay, do you have any questions? All right, so Connie was wondering in the beginning, the dressage horse, um, I think it was, was it Amy's horse that was rocking back and forth. She was wondering if that horse was shod and I, I thought probably likely it was shod. I think it was, oh, sorry, I'm gonna make you. Uh, yeah, I can see shoes here. So yes, this horse was shod. Okay, perfect. And obviously on all four. <laughs> Another one was curious as to why, like what conditions you'd only use one at a time. Well, I think we always start with one at a time because it can be a little overwhelming for them. Uh, I think sometimes they just can't balance on more than one initially. Uh, you know, I have trouble standing on a pad with one foot versus two. <laughs> so uh, I think until they develop that coordination and postural strength, they can't always, um, they can't always do it. So it's just, it's a starting point. And, you know, it doesn't mean it's not helping, I guess is the point, you know, we don't have to have them stacked on eight pads in order to see an impact. Awesome. Another question is pricing wise, um, probably just give you an email, I think. Yes. Because they, yeah. I think they vary. So another question from Rochelle is how do you know when you should take the horse off the pads? You don't want to cause a soreness, but. Right. right. So I think you have to, you know, again, you have to look at the horse and what their level of fitness is. Um, if, if they're, you know, not any kind of body condition and you throw them on pads and they want to stand on them for an hour, um, they probably will be sore. So you have to kind of be the good parent and say, yeah, I know you're having fun, but we need to maybe take you off now. So there isn't really a hard and fast rule. Um, often the horse will just step off the pad when they're ready and they'll just kick it off or they'll, they'll kick it towards another foot and you'll say, oh, I guess you want it under that foot and you'll offer it there. Um, but it's, there's no real time limit. And honestly, I had a donkey with a laminitic donkey the other day who I put the pad, pad under her foot. She literally, <laughs> Literally just put on it and then lick the shoe. So <laughs> I'm attempting to have you guys unmuted. So if you don't I'm want crying to it loud, are you kidding me? Just for you yourself if you want. Jeez. <laughs> okay. That's not the only one with dogs that are whining right now. 
Oh, hell, hell yeah, no children. Which is basically that we do not have them. We don't have to have them on our really long time to have them. Oh my gosh, he's freaking out. Oh, I think I muted. You mute me? I, mu I muted you. I apologize, Penny. My apologies. I know. <laughs> okay, so I have another question for you. Is that okay? Were you able to finish that question without me muting you? I'm sorry. I don't know. I just kept talking. Uh, I think so I sorry. That you don't need to be on them for any length of time in order to... Uh, have an impact and did you get my donkey story or did you meet me through that we got part of the donkey story i'm sorry i was attempting to be no, helpful she, and it she, failed. she literally just kind of touched the pad and then kicked it away and then fell asleep and was licking and chewing so i don't know how that works but but you know i've seen it wendy's seen it uh, many times and it doesn't seem to matter how long you're there. It's just, it's an input and then they process it and they walk around and figure it out and then they come back for more. And uh, and so I think, you know, some horses do want to just stand on them for an hour. And if it's a firm, hard pad and they're not moving a lot, I don't think there's any harm in that, especially if, you know, if they got sore feet and you want to stand them on some pads, but they're just literally standing and not swaying and rocking, you can leave them, you know, as long as they're comfortable there. But if they are like that dressage horse and weren't rocking and swing, you know, I'm guessing probably no more than five or 10 minutes initially, especially. So. Awesome. Thanks, Penny. Yeah. So another question um, or a comment, sorry, from Connie. Yes. Um, they, they, they'd be very beneficial for healthcare or hoof care professionals for sure. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, hi, Connie. <laughs> I'm supposed to do your seminar, darn it. <laughs> So yes, uh, I think I think they'd be a great tool for any hoof care professional. Um, I think especially the physio pad because it's a bit lower uh, profile and it's nice and firm. So you can put them put it under a foot, and you can see that with Wyatt, that older horse, um, when he stepped on it, um, he just fell asleep while she was doing her job. And and I think that even you know helps with safety for you guys that are under their feet, right? If um, Wendy showed a webinar last week I think with a with a hoof trimmer in uh, somewhere in the states Idaho I think and she she was working with a horse that they previously had to drug to do the feet and they didn't even have a halter on this horse it was in the middle of the arena put it on the pad and she was able to do a foot um, and then he'd kind of walk off and do whatever he'd come back he'd stand on the pad she's able to do another foot so um, for in that scenario, I mean, it was just such a better option than fighting with this horse or getting his feet done. Awesome. So um, Trisha has a question. I'm just going to um, unmute you, Trisha. Okay. Where'd you go? Oh, man. I lost you. There you are. Okay. There you go, Trisha. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't know. Can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, you're good. Oh, good. No, I'm just interested in the product as a farrier. Oh, that's uh, yeah um just what pad would be best to start with and then progress into um different pads yeah um like i say i you know i only had this half barrier pad the physio pad for the first month and i love it because we have two a hard surface and we have a medium surface so it's a little more sponge to it um so you already as in one there, but it does also come in the big one, which I'm sitting with because it's really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> don't make me. And, and so you can easily get two feet on it, which is kind of nice. Um, okay. So I cool. one of those pads probably is Okay. Well, I'll contact you here in the yeah. next couple of days yeah, and I'll see I'll... and learn a bit more about the product and yeah, sure. see what I can get started with. Awesome. Thanks, Trisha. Yeah, cool. Okay, I'm going to mute you now. Sorry. Okay. All right. So a couple more questions here. Okay. Um, I guess we sort of addressed that a little bit with Deborah. Uh, what pads would you start with for like just for a general wellness? Uh, I would say if the horse is, is you know, isn't super nervous, um, the, a set of firm pads. Um, and I think ideally, I, now that I've used them a little bit more, would like to have a set of 
just the regular pads and also a set, of, a set of the slats so that you can kind of have different configurations. It will just give you the most options because um, then you can stack and do whatever. So um, the firm is a nice, you know, it's not super hard, but it does have some spring back. So it's going to be a little more versatile. You can get some, some um, swaying on it. Um, and then probably the, sometimes it depends, the hard or the firm slant. Um, the hard slant's nice because if you want to have that rigid surface for them to stand on, there's no give and you can just, you know, have that heel up or whichever. I mean, um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a toss up between the two and, and I haven't honestly played enough with them to know exactly which one's my favorite yet. When I stand on them, I like the firm a little bit better, <laughs> but I'm not a horse. So, uh, but I think ideally you'd have maybe a pair of each of these ones to start. Awesome. Another question is a recommendation. This is from Shelby, a recommendation looking for arthritic knee. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so uh, I'll refer to Wyatt again because he has quite arthritic knees. You can only flex that one to about 90 degrees. So um, quite a bit of arthritis there. And he really enjoyed the physio pad. Um, I think it's a really nice, it's just, I think it's a nice starter pad, quite honestly. Um, I wish it came in pairs. Quite <laughs> so I would probably go with either the firm or the hard pads or a physio pad. That would be my thought. And you could do maybe do a full physio pad for him because then you could stand both front feet on there. And that'll just dampen some of the, and of course, making sure his feet are optimally functioning as well. Great. Some of that shock absorption. Thanks, Benny. Yeah. Another comment from Jessica, comment, I guess, and a question. A vibrating table has its own benefits, and I know these pads have their own benefits. Can they use to be together, or is that too much stimulation? Wouldn't that be fun? I don't see why you couldn't use them together. Uh, I think, yeah, I think, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't want to introduce both in the same day, um, but if they're comfortable in the vibe floor, they're used to it, and then you get them used to the pads, then I don't see why you couldn't combine them. I think that would be fabulous, actually. I'm really jealous that you have that option. Sounds like a science experiment. <laughs> Let's <Thanks>. try. <laughs> Uh, okay, another comment, uh, or sorry, question. Rochelle, have you used the pads on riders to show an imbalance in the riders that may show a horse compensating for the rider? That's a really interesting question. I have not, but I'll, I'm willing to bet that Wendy has. I'm, I'm not a riding instructor, so, but uh, what's interesting is when she does sessions with the rider mounted, the rider can then feel how they're swaying and shifting their weight. So they get a much better sense of where some of those imbalances are and they can really feel a difference between when they start and when they're finished um, in how the horse is moving and the relaxation and all of that so but I think you could easily put put a rider on the pad stand them on them and see which which way actually Jody and I are playing with them the other day and she stood on them and she's like wow I'm really putting a lot more weight on my left my left front my left leg um, versus my right so I think uh, as a coach, that would be a great tool to sort of uh, illuminate that. And I think probably a pad that had more give, like the medium or even the soft would give you the most feedback or the pods. I stood on the pods and was really rocking and rolling. So um, feels great on the feet too. <laughs> so hopefully that answers your question. Perfect. Thanks, Penny. I think that's about it for, for questions and comments. Hey. Oh, hi, Jody. <laughs> Can, oh, can Jody talk? Maybe. <laughs> of course Jody can talk. We love it when Jody talks. Of course. Let me just unmute you. Okay. I think actually, Jody, you should have the ability to unmute yourself, but I'll do it for you. Okay, let's see. You should be good now. Go ahead, Jody. I would have unmuted myself. I couldn't. Um, <laughs> I just, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to just hit on, I, Penny has definitely been, had an opportunity to integrate this modality into cases far more than I have. Um, but it was shocking to me, and this is what I want to relay, was how incredibly dramatic and quick the effects were in my body. So Penny came over and had social distancing time. Uh, she and I were this week having a meeting, and she threw a pad in the house for me to stand on at the kitchen sink while I was making dinner. 
and literally it was the the yellow slants that were the most profound the moment i got on that all of my um really bad chronic hip pain from my my basically my non-union fracture instantly was gone and the other thing i really started to notice was this flushing of heat moving through my feet so i think i think the application for people like rochelle kind of brought up is is super cool as well um but i'm just so excited that penny did a great job thank you for going out and learning all of this and bringing it back to us so yeah. Awesome. So any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. If you have any questions or comments about these Surefoot pads, definitely give Penny a shout. If you have questions or you're interested about anything or there's ideas that you have, um, just send an email to rehab at delaneyvetservices.com. Um, we're always happy to help. We're happy to take ideas. We have our a slate of Wellness Wednesdays booked until June 6th, I believe it is. Hopefully I got my days right. I feel like I don't know what date is it half the time, but definitely give us a call or give us an, drop an email. Um, but yeah, thanks Penny. You did a great job. All right. Thanks Lindsay. Appreciate it. Thanks everybody for coming and enjoy your evenings. <laughs>